We love this time of year. It's time for shed hunting and I can't help because we haven't been shed hunting yet. And I keep, I've shown this in a few videos, but these are lucky sheds. Um, we had Leo out last year. Uh, he was the one that won the hunt giveaway with our charity event for Camp Kicking Bear. This year will be on June 11th. Um, last year we had tickets. We had 50 tickets uh, for that Habitat Day. And it, uh, it went for, they were $200 times 50 tickets. Every cent of that goes to Camp Kicking Bear, not to us. I could probably have a Habitat Day and not give the money to the charity and keep that money. But I want to give back to the hunting community and what better way to give back than helping kids find the great outdoors. And uh, it's a really good mission statement. Check out uh, Camp Kicking Bear. But along with that, and this year it's going to be $300 per ticket. So it is going to go up. I can't see charging much more than that. But um, be $300 times 50 tickets. It's on June 11th this year. We'll have news coming out. Chris B. from Chris B. Archery will be here again. Uh, Kevin Smith. He had a World Series ring last year with the Braves. Um, he's our habitat designer and consultant out in uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania. I believe he and his wife are going to be out here too for that event. Uh, we encourage everyone to bring their kids. Uh, the more the merrier. And uh, it's a great day. So you can check out, look, look at that online. But um, this right here, Leo, we have a hunt drawing along with that. We give every cent of that to Camp Kick and Bear. We make no money on that. Uh, we donated porta potties, food, all that kind of stuff too. But um, he missed Lucky. And so Lucky got really lucky. We'd already named him Lucky. He was 13 point. He had a, another G2, just like this one right here on this side. And so we call him Lucky 13, Lucky. And Leo missed him. Unfortunately, he was the hunt winner uh, giveaway. And so um, he made it another year. We found his sheds. And, you know, I can honestly say with this one right here, this applied to one of the things we're going to talk about here. We found one of Lucky's shed right on the side of a food plot. I want to talk about where to find a shed. Where's the best spot to find a shed? It was crazy with this because we were just driving around in the outskirts of the property, not getting into the property, not pushing deer, not pushing them out of their bedding areas, uh, not putting any kind of stress on them, putting, pushing them off to neighbors where um, the sheds might drop randomly. And we were just driving around the side by side and found both those. They're 500 yards apart. So one thing is you're not gonna find matching sets all the time, sometimes you do. I found very few like that. I found one in the UP of Michigan under a cedar tree. It just almost seemed too out of place, like someone dropped them there, but I found those sheds out in the middle of nowhere in a swamp under a lone cedar tree surrounded by tag alder. Pretty cool uh, place uh, to find those. It was a nice like three to four year old eight point set of sheds. And we'll talk about where's the best spot to find a shed. Now we, we've talked about in the past, you have fence rows, ditch crossings, roads, places where deer might exert themselves and knock their head around and they'll drop this shed. But largely, high percentage we find around either food sources or bedding areas. So which one's better? You know, a food source out here, I've had comments on YouTube. Well, we never find sheds in our food plots. Well, typically that probably means they're not spending a lot of time in those food plots. They're not feeding there and staying around those food plots for hours and hours at a time because if they were, just by hours in the day and knocking their head down and digging for food, they're gonna drop those antlers. And so we found last year, we found 21 sheds in the property that was from 19 different bucks. We found only two matching sets. Out of those sheds, it was either 12 or 13 of the sheds were within 20, 30 yards of our food plots or directly in the food plots. And the majority of those were in the food plots. And so we found a lot of sheds in our food, a high percentage, you know, over half of our sheds were found in a food source. And we'll talk about that in a second. Wait till number three down here because I'm gonna explain why the best spot for yours might not be the best spot for another. Number two, bedding areas. I don't mind client properties. A lot of the sheds I find are back in bedding areas. They're in thick cover. Deer spend a lot of time in bedding areas, obviously. They're there all day. What I find, and kind of skipping ahead to number three here, is that if you have quality food plots and quality food sources that are lasting into March in ag areas, in big food areas, you're going to have an unfair number of deer directly targeting your food sources for hours at a time. When you get into big public land settings, it can be very random where deer are browsing during the night, even during the day. The one consistency on big woods, big wilderness area, is a deer's bedding area. That's where you're going to spend a lot of time. That's where you see a lot of 
sheds right next to a deer bed where you can tell this buck's been hanging out on this red cedar point a lot when you don't have those quality food sources. However, when you have those quality food sources, so I'm looking at northern regions, maybe a big wooded section of Kentucky or Ohio. It's not necessarily north and south. Big wooded wilderness areas where food sources are scattered, then really you could find sheds everywhere. It takes a lot of miles in those areas to scour public land. You can put a lot of miles on looking for our sheds. But when it gets into food sources, if you have quality food sources, deer will spend an unfair amount of time at those food sources. Hours and hours and hours. And a lot of times with them moving their heads around, they're going to drop those antlers. So it really depends on your area. If you're in big open ag area and you have great food plots, great food sources that are still standing in the wintertime, number one place for you to find a shed is in those food sources. We even have areas where they have corn cribs. Deer going in and eating in those corn cribs and they drop an antler right next to the corn cribs, or right next to where their hay is or silage, wherever it might be, where there's a concentration of food sources, they're dropping them. Bait piles, feeders, feeding stations, backyard bird feeders. At that food where they're spending hours of time and going back to and revisiting, you'll find those. But where you have those big open wilderness parcels, then I'm looking for bedding areas and I'm looking for high stem count bedding areas. You want to find areas with lots of browse, briars, hardwood regeneration. Acorns are typically gone by then. Chestnuts are long gone by then. Apples are long gone. So you're looking for diversity where a lot of different habitat types come together and you start to find deer beds. And what's interesting, those deer beds that you're finding in February, March are not necessarily indicative of where those deer will be during the fall where you're going to hunt them because this is wintering range. Sometimes those overlap, especially on public land where you can find thick cover. If you have that diversity, you have to ask yourself when you find winter habitat and you find winter bedding, you find winter pellets, droppings, are you finding those in an area that has an extreme level of diversity where you can imagine deer bedding and using during October, November, December? If you have high single source monoculture areas of conifer, grasses, shrubs that are mostly non-browsable, don't provide a lot of food, then those kind of areas that you're finding these sheds in right now are not necessarily going to be those areas that you're at during the fall. So number three, what is the best area for you? What is the number one spot to find a shed? Really depends on your habitat and your area, but it's largely going to be centered around bedding or feeding. And it's crazy because, you know, people will look at online and this is what I don't like about online sometimes. Again, looking at failures is a better way to learn than finding success. So someone will say, we never find sheds in our food sources. Well, they're probably poor food sources. The deer aren't spending a lot of time there. They're not spending hours at a time there. There's, other lot, there's lots of other food sources in the area where it's random. They're finding them in bedding areas. And someone else, you know, like here, we're finding 12 out around our food source on the property. And, and there's a few more out of those 21 that were, this is by just this our home food sources right here. You go around the corner on our other food plots stretching around, we found more sheds. So I'd say probably, and Dylan knows where we found most of the sheds. I would say Dylan out of 21 sheds, he probably had 15, 16 that were within 50 to 100 yards of a food source. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then it's, that's our edge habitat and that's our edge cover. And uh, I think this year because we have solid bedding areas, but they're all relating to food sources, we're gonna find more sheds in those bedding areas. Some of the areas we walked with Mark yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mark Kenyon was here with Dylan. Dylan was doing some work with Meat Eater and Mark Kenyon for Wired Hunt TV. And uh, we got to do a kind of an impromptu earlier than we would have liked a shed hunting trip. But when Mark's out here, we Mark hasn't been to the new home here. He's been a long time friend. So it was really cool to spend the time with Dylan and Mark yesterday around the woods. But um, we found a lot of areas where deer were bedding. I know we'll find sheds, but they're all areas within 100 yards of food source at right. the most. Right. Thick cover. So... The best spot for you to find a shed might not be the best spot for someone else. It's hard to apply general rules that you're finding success on to other people's land. That's where I look at when you have online information and recommendations. People say, always find them in food, always find them in bedding areas. Really try to understand why they're in one area and not in another and vice versa. And that applies to anything. Why is a deer traveling across here during the winter time, but he's not there during the fall? Why is he traveling through this habitat constriction during the fall and not in the summer? What that helps you do is when you always ask why and why not, you're gonna learn. And that's why I think the fails are so important because when you learn from other people's failures, you tend to ask why, why did that not work in that area? And you, you come to a better understanding overall of not only deer habitat in the herd, but also your hunt and how you can have a better hunt 
this fall. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.